check it out. The Toyota Corolla sedan just got a whole lot more competition. This is the brand new 2021 Kia Cerato sedan. This one's the Sport Plus, so you're looking at around $32,000 drive away. And really, we're gonna find out if this is worth buying because it's a sedan in a hatchback market. I'm gonna walk you around the outside, the inside, and take it for a drive and let you know if you should buy one of these. My name's Cameron, this is Product Review Cars. Let's get into it. Now I'm gonna be honest, sedan hatchbacks or hybrids of that aren't really my favorite type of car. They're compromised in the design, they have less storage and they just don't make a whole lot of sense to me when you can go out and buy say a full size sedan. So why would you look at getting one of these? Well, you're probably gonna want one of these because you want a bit more leg room and you like the longer wheelbase or you actually just like the design. So about the design, let's walk through it. Personally, it is a very subtle car compared to the likes of the i30 sedan. At the front, we have a new design and we also have a brand new badge. So that's a cool thing to see. I like the badge and it works really well with this sort of toned exterior. It's a lot more toned than the previous generation up front. So it's got a nice bit of a distinct look to it, especially with these long LEDs and headlights. They look really nice and this little garnish on the side does add quite a lot to the car. There's some vents as well. So it does look like a little bit aggressive, but it's not in your face and it's not overly stylized like the i30 sedan which is very closely in the market to this i love the wheel design on the sport plus these look great i love how they're a dual tone i really like that form and also we do have that new kia logo in the middle there and then you can see the profile along this car this is when it turns into sedan and it's not to me, sedan is almost a stretch because the way the roof line comes down, sure, it's very conventional, but it has such a small trunk lid. And here you can see just how small that trunk lid is. And then the rest of the design at the back is all just nice and subtle. It's clean, it's got some nice tonality to it, and it's not too aggressive, which is why some people like yourself might see this as more appealing than some other sedans. And certainly it does look a little bit better than a Toyota Corolla sedan. So I'll give it that. It, although it's not the most interesting exterior design, it does have some little bits of tasteful features going on that make it just a little bit more visually interesting, but certainly not as striking as the i30 sedan. However, on the inside, I actually really like the interior design here. It's simple, but it does feel like it's got a touch of luxury to it. That's partly because of these leather seats. They're very comfortable and they're also heated. They're tri-zone heated seats, so it's nice to get comfortable. That way you do have to go up to the GT to get some cooled seats going on in here. I love that everything just feels nice and solid. Kia does a really good job of building solid cars. Sure, we have some scratchy plastics down below, but we have nice soft, soft touch plastics everywhere. Yes, there's some fake stitching going on on the dashboard, but outside that, it is just a brilliant interior in terms of just how usable it is and just a relatively nice place to be. We have Kia's 10.25 inch display in the middle, which is fantastic. It's super responsive, it's clear, and it has a nice presence in the cabin. Feels like you're really connected. And yes, a physical volume knob, but some capacitor buttons below that. Not a deal breaker, they work just fine. The climate control is easy to navigate, nothing too special there. We have two USBs and also a 12 volt socket, which is cool. The shifter is nice and easy to use. It's really pleasant to look at in the cabin and it fits quite well in here. And we have some buttons flanking that and we also have a drive mode button, which we'll test out later. We have an electronic handbrake, which is just nice to see in a car in this price bracket. We have push engine start and then the gauge cluster is very typical Kia. It's not bad by any means, but it is sort of basic, but we do have like a bit of a wide screen in the middle of those analog dials, which will just tell you all your vital information you need to know about the car. Nothing really outside that. And now the back seats is why you're considering the sedan over the hatchback. Although you're compromising boot space, which we'll see in just a bit, you do get a nice back seat. I've got plenty of feet room underneath the seat for a smaller sedan. I've got plenty of knee room, more than I find it in some small SUVs. I'm 5'11 and I've got okay amounts of headroom. The roof does slope a little bit down. The Kia have tried to make a little bit of a carving to avoid me hitting my head too much. However, if you're over six foot, you're probably going to hit your head on here over some more aggressive bumps if you're having a sleep back here, for example. Now my arm room's all good. And look, I'm comfortable for a longer trip. 
Uh, the leather seats do a good job of adding a bit more comfort and luxury to this car, although they're not, the seats aren't really as reclined as I would really like. You do have some little corner windows as well at the back, which just help bring a bit more light into the cabin because this doesn't have a sunroof, so it can feel a little bit claustrophobic compared to say a hatchback with taller rear windows. The middle seat passenger is gonna be just fine because there is plenty of actual butt space and also enough space for your knees, but your feet are just a little bit cramped behind the center console. Now, as for the center console, we do have adjustable air vents and we do have a single USB, which is really nice to see for longer journeys. Although a weird admission, like in many Kia and Hyundai's cars, that only one seat is getting a map pocket and this one isn't. So. That's just something weird in the back. Now, just like many other sedans, the cool thing with having this trunk is that you can pop this open through the key or on the inside or obviously just open it manually. So if you wanna pop the trunk open, you can just hold it on the key and there you go. Now you have 434 liters back here and that's enough to put plenty of a few suitcases and even some backpacks back here because you have a lot of depth to that storage compartment. However, where the issue arises is this vertical space. You can't really put any giant or bulky items in it that might have a lot of vertical space as long as being too deep to put into the car. So that's the only issue when you have this amount of storage space to get in and out of. However, it's certainly enough to hide a body if you really must because, ugh. yeah, it's all right. It's pretty roomy back here, but not as easy to get in and out of as a hatchback. Okay, so it looks pretty good so far. So let's see how it drives. So out on the road, the Serato sedan surprised me quite a bit. And that's because it just feels so tight. And that's a weird way to phrase it, I know, but it's just really well put together and it translates to the driving experience as well. Where some other cars I've driven, they sure I feel like they're built really well, but the driving experience doesn't exactly translate to how well they're built. But here, I sort of feel like I'm driving a little bit more of a premium car than I should be for the price. And so what have we got here in terms of power? We've got a two litre four cylinder petrol motor. It's putting 112 kilowatts and around 192 newton meters. So sure, it doesn't look like a bunch of power on paper, but it's certainly more than some other smaller sedans of the past. And so being up at around 112 kilowatts is actually pretty good for a car with this weight. And so in the Sport Plus, we have some drive modes. We have Smart, which is what I'd recommend leaving this car in. It's a blend of all the different drive modes. We have Eco, we have Sport, and we have Normal. So as for how those drive modes feel, Eco is pretty standard in all these sorts of cars, just a numbing agent really, to make sure that you're not gonna be burning a whole bunch of fuel. Then Normal is just obviously what it says. It's just how the car is meant to be set up. And Sport just gears up everything and it puts this six speed auto automatic into a more responsive setting as well as making the engine feel a bit more responsive as well. Now, as for driving this around town, what I really appreciate is this has got Kia's safety systems on it. So you've got automatic lane keep assist, you've got radar cruise control. So this is a fantastic daily driver in that case because I love using Kia's safety technology because it really does feel like it's quite up there in terms of how easy it is to use but also on how effective it is. For long journeys, having a car steer for you in a lane or even just around town guiding your hands is just, <laughs> feels a bit weird at first but it really does make a bit of a difference. So I really like that in this car. And since this is a sedan, your cargo space, which actually generates quite a lot of road noise usually, is kept off separate from the cabin. So it does feel a little bit quiet in here compared to a normal hatchback. And it is a bit more serene in that case. But what I don't feel in this car is a sense of road presence. This is a very under-assuming car and it's not designed to pull attention from people. It is a good looking car in terms of it just being very nicely styled and it's got enough muscular tone in it. And also the update has done favors in terms of making this look a little bit more visually appealing but this doesn't really sort of get me excited to look at it i actually really love the look of the i30 sedan especially the n-line version where this even in the gt guys not really something that's super super jaw-dropping or turning heads which is what 
I guess some people do like in a car like this. This does feel like it's got a great drive position. I can get nice and low in the car and also the telescopic steering wheel means that I can get nice and comfortable and have a very, very good driving position for a car like this. So that is a big positive is just how comfortable you can get. But like I said in the interior, you are lacking a bit of bolstering for your legs, so it does feel like my legs are sort of splaying out a little than I would like. But this car does do a good job of heading through corners. It is designed to be more comfortable than anything, but it does allow you to sort of point the nose in a bit, and even though it's front wheel drive, you can sort of send it through corners a bit more. It gives you a bit more confidence to go through. So I think these front wheel drive sedans are actually starting to show some big improvements compared to where they used to be. It doesn't feel as rattly and it doesn't feel as sort of tinny as some of those older ones do. Instead, this feels like a premium product and add all these features like a reversing camera. You've also got your big screen here. You've got heated seats and whatnot, and tire pressure and monitoring gauges. Hey, it's a really, really good option as a daily driver. If you're looking for a small sedan, I wouldn't say this would be my top pick. I'd be looking at the i30 sedan. That one's a bit more visually interesting. It looks a bit more premium on the inside as well. And it personally drove a little bit better than this one. Where this appeals is that it's toned down on the exterior. So if you don't like the look of the i30, but like a bit of a solid build interior, then this does quite well in that regard. And also it just does look better than the Toyota Corolla sedan. And so I'd like to know your thoughts. What small sedan would you buy? Would you even consider one over a hatchback? Let me know in the comments down below. And also if you owned one of these, make sure you leave a review of your car on productreview.com.au because it's really interesting, interesting to see and also get your thoughts on what it's like to own a Kia Cerato sedan over a longer period of time. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any future reviews here on our channel and make sure you leave a like if you liked it and a dislike if you disliked it. With that out of the way, my name's Cameron and I'll see you in the next one.